we are talking gym anxiety. Have you ever felt really insecure or really awkward going to a new gym for the first time? I mean, not knowing where like the restrooms and the fountains are or like the different machines and then you feel like you're awkwardly walking around and you feel like people are watching you. Not to mention the fact that maybe you probably already feel a little bit overwhelmed with just the machines and not knowing how the right form goes or like looking at some kind of contraption and being like, what am I supposed to do with this thing, right? And then you wanna awkwardly like read the instructions but you feel like people are gonna watch you so then you probably just like avoid it altogether. Trust me, I have been there, we have all been there. Just remember that every single person has been new to a gym at some point or another. It's literally impossible for someone not to be new to a gym. What I'm gonna go through today are some of my favorite beginner tips that I wish I knew and the stuff that I kinda had to figure out along the way um, to get myself to be more comfortable. We're gonna go through exactly what exercises you should be focusing on when you first get in the gym, where you should start out, how many to do, how often to do them, right? There's so many questions that come up and I think people make it a little bit more confusing than it needs to be. So today, let's jump in to my favorite tips that are gonna help you as you go into the gym for the first time. Okay, so number one, focus more on your performance goals rather than your physique or your body weight on the scale. Meaning that when you go as a first timer and you get on a treadmill, if you can only do like one mile walking, that's fine. Next week, let's push that speed a little bit. And every week you're gonna focus on the goal of improving your performance for all exercises rather than like how many calories do I need to burn? I need to get like this like, you know, intense workout in. Just focus on the small things and be happy for all the progress that you're gonna make every single week. Because honestly, that's like the biggest thing that's gonna keep you going. Once the whole motivation and the excitement and the novelty wear off, that's gonna keep you going afterwards. So keep that in mind. Number two, don't try to hop on all the machines too quickly. So what I mean by this is usually I recommend for any beginner, the best thing for you to do is understand your body, understand how you move, understand where you struggle with, what muscles you are really weak in. And to do this, the best thing to do is body weight exercises and dumbbells. Let's say you do leg extension. That's a great exercise for isolation, yes. And I do incorporate that in my workouts. But the important thing is at the beginning, I want you to get comfortable with having your body move, work on your balance, work on your stability, um, and get your muscles to stretch, right? And doing overall compound movements where your entire body is working together is actually gonna be the best way to get started, especially if you're going from ground zero and you haven't done a lot. Hopping on a bicep curl machine isn't necessarily going to give you much more benefit than doing like bicep curls, right? Standing up where you have to activate your core, where you have to focus on your entire body and not swaying, right? That's a really big thing too. So again, your best friend are body weight exercises and dumbbells because it's gonna train you to focus on your balance, on your stability, and overall compound movements are gonna help you would kind of like figure out your body and get it all moving in the right way together. Number three, try them at home a couple times, just body weight only, look in the mirror, get really, really comfortable with all of the different aspects of it, if that's something that worries you. But I promise you, people are not staring at you in the gym. Everyone is like so self-absorbed when they go to the gym, they care more about themselves than anything else. So I would just recommend finding a location in the gym with a mirror. So that way you can watch yourself as you do every single exercise. Don't go off into the corner somewhere where you hope no one can see you because think about it this way, the more, the, the more wrong you do the exercise, the more insecure you're gonna feel. It's gonna be a lot easier for you to like go in with confidence 
And also going in, you're prepared, you know you're gonna go from one thing to another. You don't have to necessarily like mindlessly walk around and be like, what do I do next, right? It's all about just trying to feel confident before going in and it's gonna translate when you're on the floor too. Okay, so number four, make sure that when you go in the gym, especially as a beginner, do not try to go too hard. I know that can be really easy to do because you're super motivated, you have like all these ideas of everything that you want to improve on, and, but I promise you that if you haven't been working out regularly and you try to go to the gym, you will definitely overwork yourself really quickly. I recommend start small with about 30 minutes. I promise those 30 minutes, you're still going to get pretty sore the next day. <laughs> it's not like you're going to feel like nothing happened. It is important for you to remember that, hey, like you still want to work out the rest of the week, right? So if you go too hard the first day, you're going to have to stay home and like lay in bed because you're going to be so sore you can't even move. Okay, number five. This one's really, really important. Are you listening? So, number five is please, please do not follow your favorite Instagram influencers or your favorite YouTubers and doing their workouts while you're at the gym. There's a couple reasons why I say this. Number one, which is probably the most important, is I don't think I've ever come across an influencer that's wor doing workouts that are meant for complete beginners. Most of the time, they are putting background music on, they're going through and showing you their workouts, meaning that they've been working out for years and their workouts are not gonna be the right ones for you. If you're a beginner, you're probably not gonna really know how to do them anyway. And a lot of influencers do not put like complete tutorials of every single exercise on their, on their video. So if you're just watching it and you're like, oh, I can copy that, but you don't probably know where to focus, like where, what, ex what muscle groups you're working. You have no mind-muscle connection, which is really important, and I'll talk about that later. Um, and then on top of that, like if, if every single week that you go into the gym, if you're doing completely different exercises because you're just randomly cherry picking and finding one of your favorite workouts or favorite influencers to do, you're not really gonna develop consistency in the right way. We wanna make sure that you are a term called progressive overload, meaning that you're constantly getting stronger, you're constantly like adding a little bit more intensity to your workout. Um, and if you're going from like one thing to another and you're just jumping around, there's really no strategy behind your workout plan. And that can leave you with not seeing the best results and probably giving up because you're just kind of like cherry picking and just doing whatever and it's probably not right for your body. Try to stick to like four or five exercises, which I'm gonna go over next, but I want you to just choose a few and then from that, just progress and get better and stronger at them every single week. It may be boring, but it's effective. All right, so number six, we call them compound exercises. You know that they're going to fully work the entire body, right? And it works multiple muscle groups at a time. That's gonna help you with what I said earlier, your balance, your stability, um, your core strength. When you go in, go in with four to five exercises that you do that day. That's it, no more. And for those exercises, I want you to do three sets of 10 to 15 reps every week, keeping track of if you only did body weight this time, next week, can you add 10 pounds, right? The week after that, can you add another 10? So just keeping track of how much you're lifting is gonna just give you a little bit more of a boost of motivation. So you're gonna get stronger each time. And it's gonna be a lot more effective than just picking random exercises, I promise. So the five exercises that you should incorporate throughout the week, just break it up into maybe like a lower body day and an upper body day, but you've got squats, you've got deadlifts, You've got overhead press, which works the shoulders. You've got chest press, which is, you know, like a bench press. And then you've got uh, back rows. So those are gonna be the ones that they target pretty much every part of your body, but while you're doing the exercise, you're actually engaging your core, you're engaging a lot more of the 
of the other muscle groups as well. I would recommend writing those down, learning how to do those five, and then from there, walk into the gym and be confident that you're able to do it because that's all it takes. Number seven, eight, and nine are all gonna be about the specific pillars that I think are so important that you need to incorporate in your workouts. And this is something that takes a little bit of time. This is something that if you need a professional to help you with, like a personal trainer, AKA me, make sure that you are learning these three things. And actually part of my uh, Muscle Mindset Academy, which is the online course that I help newbies with to get better at their lifts, this is specifically what we go through because these are gonna be literally the foundation of every single workout from here to forever. Number one, form and technique. So again, making sure that you know exactly how to do every single workout each time. You cannot possibly do this as a beginner without a mirror, right? You can't possibly do this without looking up, researching, and understanding how the exercises work. You may think that you're doing bicep curls the right way because you see them online and it looks pretty standard, but I guarantee there's a couple things we're missing on the bicep curl, so you need to learn the form. Make sure you're not swaying, right? All these things, what do you need to squeeze? What do, what do you need to um, focus on, right? Number two, uh, mind-muscle connection. This is huge. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of this, but mind-muscle connection means that when you're doing an exercise, let's go back to the bicep curl. When you're doing the bicep curl, you wanna make sure that you're mentally thinking about what muscle you need to squeeze, right? So if you don't feel, if you're not thinking about it, you're not gonna feel it. And if you're not feeling it, chances are you're not gonna be as effective with that exercise as you wanna be, right? So I always encourage people to really focus as you're doing the exercise, really zero in on that muscle group. In order to do that, you need to know what muscle groups are being worked. You need to know when to squeeze, when to activate, right? Um, how to breathe is also gonna be a really big part of my muscle connection. These are all things that I teach in my Muscle Mindset Academy, and if you have any interest in that, I'm gonna put a link below to learn more. Um, and number three is full range of motion. You wanna make sure that you're not cutting any moves off because if you're not going the full range of that muscle, you're not getting the best benefit from it. So there's a lot of people that will do squats and like go halfway, right? Um, if you keep going just halfway, you're never gonna be able to progress to actually getting deep enough, right? So I would rather you focus on getting deep enough and doing like three versus doing halfway and doing 12. See what I'm saying? I'd rather you focus on getting full range of motion, going deep into that squat where your quads, your thighs are parallel and table, I call them tabletop. Um, that way you're constantly like working the right muscles. Even if you can only do two or three, that's okay. Because next week, guess what? You're gonna do it again. And maybe you'll be able to do four or five, right? And then from there, five to six. See how it all progresses? You just have to do them the right way. And that's something I fully support. You guys have to push yourself. It may suck especially if you're not new or if you're new to squats and your body doesn't want to go there. Um, using something to support yourself, but getting the full range of motion no matter what is really, really important. Okay, so number 10, the last advice piece I'm gonna give you. Try to make sure, I know that as a newbie, you're probably gonna be struggling um, to lift heavy. No doubt about that. But I have noticed with a lot of my clients that they can push themselves a little bit harder than what they're doing by themselves. I've noticed with specifically online clients because the girls that I have face to face, I'm putting weight into their hand. I'm like giving them the weight I think that they are good at. But when you're online, it's a little bit tougher, right? Please don't pick up fives. If for any reason, like maybe you have like a couple exercises that you can do fives, but chances are if you're kind of like a healthy, um, young, like 25 to 35 year old woman who has no injuries or pain of any kind, you should be able to start with eight pound dumbbells. But the biggest problem I see is like people will take five pound dumbbells and do bicep curls and I'm like, you can definitely crank out at least eight, at least as a beginner, and then moving up to more. But I want you to get to the place where the last two are really big challenge and you're like pushing through, 
right? And you're breathing heavy because that's when the sweat comes. That's when the muscle growth is going to come. So get to that point. So the biggest thing I see people do is just lifting five pound dumbbells or, you know, like doing squats with like 10 pounds. Um, and like, if you can do more, do more. I hope that these tips helped you, especially as a beginner. I know what it was like. I was in your shoes. Uh, like six seven years ago I lost over 50 pounds um, I had to learn from scratch all on my own how to lift weights and how to do um, weightlifting and strength training and I know that it's not easy I know that sometimes you can look at uh, someone on online on YouTube or something and be like why do they make it so easy why do they make it look like it's no big deal and your body doesn't move that way I get it um, but remember everyone had a day one so don't compare your day one to their day 1000 because it's gonna be different and if you need any more help with your form with your mind muscle connection with all the things that we talked about today I got you click the link below to learn more about the muscle mindset Academy and I hope to see you there